give him praise this morning. Woo! Hey. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a great day. We're here and Jesus is here. What could, there's nothing better than that. Here with family, right? We welcome you online, family. We love you. And we just say you're going to be refreshed and empowered by the Spirit of the living God as we enter into His presence today. Oh, my gosh. Woo! I'm so excited about today. Aren't you guys? Oh, hey, it's the eighth day. It's a good day. Number eight stands for new beginnings. I just got to let you in, online family. Number eight stands for new beginnings, a new anointing, a new beginning for us. It's the eighth day after the resurrection of Jesus. Whew. And it's a miraculous day. He walked through the door that day. Come on. Woo! In the midst. Thank you, God. Amen. Are you guys ready to enter in even more in a greater way today? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Put your hands together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you.
and sing I will build and I will build my life sing it out Your Lord, oh, 
a good time here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the worship. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift up the name of Jesus. Let's just begin to lift the name of Jesus, whether you're here in the building, uh, in the house, or you're watching online. Family, let's just begin to lift the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you do what you come to do, God, that you come to move mountains, God, that you come to move situations in our life. I heard it said once of a great preacher that he, uh, he, he had this moment where, where he put two chairs in an empty room and uh, he sat in one and he told the devil to sit in the other one. And he said, now you're going to watch me worship Jesus. Now you're going to watch me worship Jesus. And there comes times in our life where we're facing situations that are big. We know that. We understand that. 
And sometimes there's things that seem like they're too big. But we started this way and we're going to end this way. That we're going to raise a hallelujah unto the Lord because my eyes are not fixed on the battle, but my eyes are fixed on the one. My eyes are fixed on the one. And this morning, even as we end this time of worship, as we draw to this, this, uh, this time of worship to a close, it will be said that the people of Shiloh were a people that told Satan and put him in his place with their worship. It will be said of our church and of us as a people that we are a radical love worshiping Jesus church that will raise a hallelujah that will see mountains come down that will see people healed that will see lives transformed we are that people and right now in the name of Jesus in these couple of moments of just free worship I don't want you to just sit here but I want to invite you to engage with the Holy Spirit to engage with heaven right now and to begin to raise your hallelujah begin to raise your your prayer begin to, to to let the devil know that Jesus lives and let him watch you worship because you're not gonna bow down to situations but we're gonna rise above them right now for us for our household for the world around us in Jesus name church stand up stand up church and begin to worship God and begin to lift up a praise right now begin to worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you that you come to do what only you can do, Father. Thank you, God, that you're moving mountains right now, Father. Thank you, God. You're making the high places low in Jesus' name, God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We receive that promise right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, listen, do you need a miracle this morning? I mean, it's just an honest question. Do you need a miracle this morning? Do you need a miracle this morning? I think it's a good question to ask ourselves I, or, or even answer. Yes. Yes, I need a miracle this morning. I need a miracle this morning. I felt like this morning that, that today was a miracle morning. I really felt that this morning when I was in my prayer time, uh, you know, with the Lord. It's a miracle morning. So do me a favor and put your hand where it hurts. It, whatever part of your body, if it's, a, if it's an emotional issue or heart issue, hey, just put your hand on your heart. It's okay. Put your hand where it hurts right now. Jesus, come and do what only you can do. Jesus, come and do what only you can do. Jesus, come now and do what only you can do. For our online family watching, same thing. Jesus, come and do what only you can do. Father, move in power right now. In Jesus' name. Father, we receive your blessing right now in Jesus' name. We receive healing in Jesus' name. Say, body, receive healing now in Jesus' name. Whatever you're, whatever you're touching, hip, receive healing. Jaw, receive healing. Teeth, receive healing. Heart, receive healing now in Jesus' name. 
soul receive healing right now in Jesus name receive the Holy Spirit receive 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I believe this word is for someone online but if it's for someone here receive it as well thank you Jesus I believe that you've just been tormented with thoughts of suicide tormented with thoughts of depression and right now in the name of Jesus we're gonna we're gonna pray for you but right now God Jesus Christ the hope of our world the hope of us right now is visiting you right now the presence of God I'm I am decreeing that you are feeling the radical supernatural presence of God over your life right now right now in the name of Jesus we command depression to lift off in Jesus name right now in the name of Jesus we decree life new life life abundantly the life that Jesus Christ came to give you receive it now in Jesus name thank you God that you're moving powerfully father that not one would be lost in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you God we're gonna deal with the feeling of failure right now we're gonna deal with the feeling of failure right now I believe that God is showing me that there are many that feel you have failed that you have failed and that why would God love you? Why would God use you? Man, that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We do not receive that in Jesus' name. The Bible says that God has plans for you and later on in the sermon we're going to see that He makes sure that those plans come to be. I want you to know that God is radically in love with you. And this morning, failure is not even on the table because Jesus absolutely loves you. Where you need healing, you will receive it now in Jesus' name. Where you need God to touch your heart, you will receive it now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're touching issues of the heart this morning, Father. That you're touching issues in our life, Father, that matter to us, God, right now in Jesus' name. That you're moving in our life in Jesus' name. You are good enough. You are good enough for the task at hand. God says right now for the task at hand, you are good enough. Thank you, Jesus. God says for that very thing that you're facing, you will be victorious. You are victorious. You are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we receive that promise. We receive that truth. We prophesy. We decree. We declare in Jesus' name that we have the victory. We have the victory. We have the victory, and it will manifest now in Jesus' name. Let's praise the Lord. Let's lift a praise to him now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. You know, there's moments where you just feel like you go anywhere. You could go anywhere. But we're going to take a second to look at our neighbor square in the face, man. We're going to look at our neighbor square in the face. And we're going to remind them that they're victorious in Jesus Christ. Right now, you have the victory in Jesus Christ. My friend, you have the victory in Jesus Christ right now. Amen. And by the way, you look good too. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give him a praise for that awesome worship. Thank you, Sharon and team. Or Susan and team. I don't know why I said Sharon. All these years I've known her and I just called her Sharon. I don't know. Maybe the Rose of Sharon. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just bless you with Jesus. Susan, I've known Susan for, for a long time and I accidentally just called her Sharon. It happens. But, uh, but she is, man, I'm so grateful that they were here today. That was awesome worship. Thank you, Lord. There's a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit in the room. Uh, here's something that I had to laugh at this morning. And I know you'll laugh with me. So Patricia's on the cruise. She's already coming back. In fact, in, fact, in speaking with her, she, she sends her blessing right now in Jesus' name. She is so excited about things that are coming. I'm about to share those with you right now, but I want you to know that Patricia's praying for us and that she's uh, blessing us in Jesus' name. She totally misses us. Every time I, every time I talk to her in these, in these moments when she's away, she always says, oh, I miss Shiloh. I miss Shiloh. I know that it feels like we only get together one day a week, but know this, that your leaders are praying for you. 
your leaders are interceding for you. That, uh, that, that we absolutely love our church. We love what God is doing. We love our people. And we know that God is moving because we're Shiloh Knights. The Bible, the, 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 when, when we look at the picture of Shiloh in the Bible, it says the place where the presence of God dwells. Yeah, come on, I'm a Shiloh Knight. So I go to a church where the presence of God dwells, but I'm a Shiloh Knight. So guess what? The presence of God dwells in me. Amen? It dwells in you, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> And so she totally sends her blessing, and, and just like last week, Robert says, ditto, amen. <laughs> a man, a few words until he preaches, right? Come on. <laughs> but, uh, but we absolutely miss you and love you. And then, and then Russell and Mary are gone. Some of our pastors are gone. You know, there's a lot of people uh, that are away on the trip and stuff. And then, if that wasn't enough, Jonathan got asked to lead a conference, a worship conference in uh, Chicago, or in a, in a healing conference. So he's over there serving. Thank you, Jesus. Again, we have the ability to send our leaders. Thank you, Jesus. And then Christy, she's on a missions trip into Cambodia. Praise the Lord. And so thank you, God, for friends. Woo! Thank you, God, for friends, because I almost had to lead worship. I almost had to lead worship. And Matthew, if I'm leading worship, bro, you better pray, man. You better pray, my bro. And, uh, and uh, you know, the Spirit of God moves. Yeah, he, he used a donkey, right? He used a donkey, so I'm fully confident that he'll, he'll use someone. He'll use us, yeah? But, uh, but, uh, but thank you, God, for friends. So look at your neighbor and say, thank you, friend. Yeah, thank you, friend. Thank you. And, and even the Holy Spirit, thank you, friend. Holy Spirit, thank you. And he knows how to fill the house, you know. And so, and so this morning we had an awesome worship time uh, with them. We, we're just going to keep it going. Amen. You guys ready for some word? Uh, let me try that again. I think you guys, we're just going to remix this. Are you ready for some word? Listen, I say that because it, it just postures us. I, I'm just having fun. I'm lighthearted. I'm playful. But, but here's the deal. Is let's posture ourselves to receive the word of God. God has a word for us today, and we want it. We want to, we want to, we want to dive into it. We want to activate it. We want to move it around. You know, I always picture the, the, the word when, when we get to words from the Lord, kind of like dough, you know, when you're, when you're making bread. You just got to get in there. I mean, the best way to make bread is use your hands. You know, you got you to get in there. You got to work it, man. And, and as you work it, as you receive it, hey, just know that the, the good bread is coming, man. It's coming. It's just moments away. But we're just gonna, we're just gonna create it. You know, we're just gonna go for it. And that, that has nothing to do with my sermon. <laughs> but it's a great, great motivator that we're gonna receive from the Lord today. Uh, a couple things I wanna tell you right before we jump into the Word is uh, experience night is coming. Hallelujah. I don't know if, uh, yeah, come on, get excited. I'm excited. I'll tell you why I'm excited, but, but if you've never been to an experience like, man, I want to invite you, come and be next Sunday, uh, all day Sunday, and then and, and the, the actual experience night is at night. It's at 6 p.m. at night. But during the day, I mean, we get the party started. So next Sunday morning, woo, man, we're going to get the party started. I mean, we're going to get the party started right now because we're just so excited. We're going to get the party started now. We're going to be thinking about it all week, and it's going to be awesome. But here's, here's what I want to tell you is that um, our, our, our awesome leader, Patricia King, is going to be here. Come on, she's going she's gonna to come with a powerful word. Katie Souza's going to be in the house. Come on, we love Katie Souza. K Katie, if you're watching, we absolutely miss you. We love you, and we thank you for your ministry. Patricia, we love you and miss you, and we need you to get back. <laughs> but when mom's away, the kids will play. But also, Charlie Robinson. Have you guys ever met Charlie Robinson? Yeah, awesome, awesome man of God. And, uh, you know, God is using him in such amazing ways. Uh, last time I was with him, you know, just, give, just hearing the testimonies of the way God's using him around the world and the Asian nations and things and how he, he's, just, he's just being used as a light in the darkness, man. And, I mean, people are coming to know people that, you, that, that, that feel unreachable, people that just, that, you know, maybe feel like they're too, they're too far, far gone in the darkness. God is using him uh, to just speak prophetically over people's lives and opening doors for him. And things are changing uh, in these nations. And so, and so he's going to be visiting with us and he's going to, he, his desire is to, to minister prophetically over people. And so he's going to come. He wants to minister in, in personal prophetic word. He wants to deliver a word. He's going to be preaching next Sunday morning. So it's going to be awesome. So we're, we're, we're just getting primed up. We're getting primed up. It's going to be awesome. So today, we're going to set the stage for next Sunday. It's going to be awesome, but we're going to have a great time. And so bring your friends. It's a free event. It's at 6 p.m. Uh, experience night. We're going to be here. We also have our guest worship uh, leader, Mark Schneider. And uh, I've not heard, uh, or I'm sorry, I've not uh, ever met Mark Schneider personally, but I've heard his worship, and he's anointed. Oh, man, he's anointed. He's bringing his electric guitar. 
That's my impression of electric guitarists. I play no instruments except for this one. Getting really good at this one right here. But, uh, but we're going to have an awesome, awesome time. So look forward to it. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Uh, bring your family. And listen, I, I will tell you this. It will be very, very packed. It will be because there's no way that you can have that many prophets in the house and not feel the glory of God. There's no way that you can't have that many prophets in the house and not get a word of the Lord. Amen. There's no way that you can have that many prophets in the house and not see some miracles. Right, Because these are people that have dedicated their life to the word of God. They've dedicated their life to blessing the people. Amen. And so we're just going to receive that. So thank you, Father. We're getting ready for experience. It's going to be an awesome time. How many of you are excited about next week? Good. Now let's get excited about this week. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, let's pray really quick. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word today. Lord, we thank you that we're about to receive your word, God. Lord, we thank you that you are moving among the people, Father, that you are moving in your church in this hour. God, we thank you. Last week, we celebrated resurrection power. And this week, we continue to celebrate as we know that resurrection power is for us, but also for everyone around us. God, we thank you that you're moving uh, here this morning. Father, I pray that it would be your words spoken and not mine. But Father, I thank you for your heart that's being displayed over your people in this hour And everybody that hears it says, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we'll jump into some of it. You guys ready? All right. We're on week two of our little mini series uh, called Operation Go Forth. Yeah, come on. Operation Go Forth. He went forth so that we could go forth. Yeah, come on, this is the revelation is that, that Jesus Christ and his, and his goodness, you know, he went to the cross and he came uh, and, and, and rose again. Right? And he did this uh, for you and for me. And uh, one of the things that I, that I want to start with here is that I, I, oftentimes we think that Jesus came to make bad people good. And uh, I want to tell you that's not the case. He did something far greater. He broke the curse. He broke the curse of death in our lives. He broke the curse that Satan was proclaiming over our lives, that he had a hold of us because Jesus is so radically in love with us that he said, uh, that's it. Enough is enough. I'm going all the way. And so now we have this promise of resurrection power. We have this life of resurrection power through walking out every day. And the reason it's easy for us to receive this message today is because a lot of us and most of us, and this is what I absolutely love about our church, is that we're already activating this. And what I'm talking to you about today is a new normal. The new normal. We have a promise in the word of God that our life has changed and this has now become our normal everyday life and existence. The supernatural working miracle power of Jesus Christ. It is for us today. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We're not doing this alone. Oh, man, you ever ever had to take on a big task all by yourself? Ouch. Yeah? One time I opened up my garage door and I said, nope, nope, nope. Nope, shut that thing. <laughs> but here's the, here's the reality is that we're not doing this by ourselves. Um, I jumped into one, of, I want to share this with you uh, because I absolutely love this book. It absolutely has blessed my life. Um, it's where I got a little bit of this message from and uh, it has blessed me so much, but it's this book right here. It's called Light Belongs in the Darkness by Patricia King. I think she wrote this book, I want to say like uh, 2009, 2000, yeah, I think 2005, 2009-ish, somewhere in that era, she wrote this book. And this book blessed my life so much. This book blessed my life so much. It, it helped me to see that, uh, that uh, the Holy Spirit isn't just for the four walls, but it's for everyone around us. It is absolutely for everyone around us. And I want to encourage you that uh, if you have a heart to spread the gospel, you know, we just, uh, again, coming off the heels of the send and, and the move of God, the great move of God that's happening right now where people are just, I, I don't know if you, if you know this or if you've been able to hear this. I know that it's, it's normal for us here at this church, but, but there's people that are rising up all over the place and just sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and the gospel along with the power. And we're seeing more miracles now than we ever have. This is the display of the work of Jesus. We're seeing, I mean, it's just people are just, are just moving in power. 
And, uh, and you know, this book is just amazing. It's, it's a totally hands-on tool for you to learn how uh, to move prophetically and to move in God's power in this, in this hour. And so it's just an absolutely amazing book. You can get it on Patricia King's uh, store, patriciaking.com, uh, Finding Your Place in God's End Time Harvest. Wow. God is using us. This is, this is some of what I'm speaking about today in our new normal. Our new normal. Now, last week, just to remind everyone, we talked a little bit about resurrection power. And there was three promises inside of that. I'm just going to reiterate a little bit, but if you want to hear the full prophetic word, if you want to hear the full manifestation of that, if you want to hear oh, what we talked about, go back. I want to encourage you to go back and watch it. We had an amazing time last week on Easter Sunday, what we, what we call in this house Resurrection Sunday. Uh, but it was an amazing time. And one of the things that we talked about was going full power mode, that in this season, the church is going full power mode because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that allowed power to, for us to receive the power of God, the supernatural power work, uh, miracle working power of God so in our lives to, and, and also to share it. That we're going full power, that the, that the glory of God is going to be made manifest in every area of our lives. Every area of our life. Look around. Every area of your life. Every, you can involve the supernatural glory of God in every area of your life. You don't have to do life alone. We're doing it with the Holy Spirit. We also received uh, uh, the promise that, that the word has power. The reminder of the promise that the word is powerful and that you're going to see the word of God not only being spoken everywhere, but also printed everywhere. The word of God, the, the rhema word of God. Oh man, that's exciting. I get excited about the word of God. And that's what I love about our church is that we are a church that loves the word. And so we're in it. So when we start decreeing and we start praying, we're doing it from the word of God. Everything that we're doing, why? Because there's life in it. It is the raiment. It is the living word. And, that, uh, and we also talked about how people are going to just like, the understanding is going to grow in the church. And the manifestation of the word of God is going to grow in the church. And we're going to, like, I just have a, I have a, I shared this last week, but I just believe that there's many who have been asking God for understanding. Maybe even those who have been asking God to learn how to read and, and understand the word of God in that way. Uh, that, that they were just, that it's just revelation time. That God is just opening up and it's just revelation time. And you're going to receive more on the word of God now than you ever have in your life. The word of God does not grow old. It continues to grow in power. It is, it is not just a, a, a book of good statues and morals. It is that and, right, the supernatural testimony of Jesus Christ and how it is active for us today. And then we also talked about, you know, saying no, saying no to temptation, saying no to the things of this world that would, that would have you, that, that Shiloh would be a place that, where we have nothing in common with the world. Not because we don't love our world, not because we don't love our people. Not, I don't, I'm, I'm not talking about becoming cave dwellers. Thank you, Jesus. Caves are kind of damp. They're cold. Might feel good in the summertime, though, here in Arizona. Come on. But we're not cave dwellers. We're, we're called to go out. You know? but, but in that, God is raising the standard. And this is what I love is that he raises the standard of righteousness and purity and holiness, and then he gives us his grace that empowers us to do it. So he gives us the recipe and then the pot and the pans to cook it. It's awesome. And he buys the groceries. I don't know where that example came from. It just did, but it works. And this week we're going to jump into part two of the series, which is the new normal. I really believe that God is just breaking out just absolutely breaking out everywhere. I can see it everywhere I go. Man, it doesn't matter where I go. People let me pray. And I just want you to know that I don't walk up to people and say, hey, listen, I'm a holy anointed pastor. You have to let me pray for you. I don't even, most of the times I forget to say my name. Most of the time I forget to tell them who I am. But it's not because I don't love me. It's just I'm excited about who is in me. And that he wants out because of resurrection power, because of this moment in Acts where they were in the upper room and they were hanging out and they said, God, we're not leaving here until we get what you promised us. Because of moments like that, come on, I'm an Acts kind of guy. I did a personality profile test. I am a doer. 
I know this, but you are too. We, the church. And so we have this, 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 this gift, the Holy Spirit, that's just excited, absolutely excited of coming out, being unleashed, turn them loose. And you know, when I go to pray for people, I, everyone has their way. I, there's a million ways we could teach on this, but I just want to give you one example of many. I don't often ask for permission if I can pray. I just ask if I can pray and then I go for it. Right? I just ask if I can pray and then I go for it. So I don't say, would you allow me to pray for you? I I, hey, can I pray for you? I just make it real simple. Can I pray for you? And we're going to talk a little about, about this in a minute. But I just say, can I pray for you? And oftentimes they don't even know that I meant right now, but that's why it works so well. And then they'll say yes. And then I start praying. And usually I hear this. Oh, you meant right now. Yes, I meant right now. And I just start praying. And, I, and, and whether it be a prophetic word, whether it be uh, uh, I, I noticed that they need a healing, whatever is going on, I just, I just I'm choosing to let the Holy Spirit out and for this to become my new normal life. My mom had a good laugh at me the other day because she went to the place where I get a haircut. And so she's getting all this word that we're talking about. And so she decides, well, I'm going to practice this too. So she sits down in the bar, uh, there in the chair and she's, uh, she didn't go to the barbershop, sorry. I go to a salon. I'm so sorry <laughs> to offend, but that's who's available in Maricopa. And so I went and, uh, it, it, you know, and we go and we pray for everybody. And so she went and so she's like, she doesn't know where I go all the time, but she went and she started, she started praying or she getting a haircut. She said, hey, can I pray for you? She chose my method. Can I pray for you? And she just started praying for the lady. And she said, where do you go to church? The lady who was cutting her hair. And she said, she said, well, I go to Shiloh. And she goes, oh, oh, you go to Shiloh. And she said, well, my son, he, he, you know, he serves as the pastor. And she, she said, your son is Francisco. <laughs> okay, now here's where it's fun. She, go, she got excited because she remembered, last time I was in there, here's what happened. I decided I'm going to let the Holy Spirit out. And so when I sat down and got a haircut, I asked her if I could pray for her. I started praying for her. Before I left, I prayed for every hairdresser and every, get, get, every guest in the place, right? Why? Because I wanted to let the Holy Spirit out. So what, she, what happened with my mom when she went in there to get a haircut is that everyone got excited because it said, oh, you're Francisco's mom. You better pray for us, <laughs> right? And so then she started praying for everyone and they started having church. <laughs> Why? Because she's letting the Holy Spirit out. She's letting the Holy Spirit out. And so this is what I'm talking about. It's an example, but this is, this is our new normal. Get ready. This is our new normal. That in every place you encounter, we're not made for prison. I mean, to me, it's like if we leave, hey, can we turn the air conditioner on? Yeah, down. Brother, I'm getting hot. I'm starting to sweat on the inside and the out. But this is our new normal. This is where we're going as a church. And like it or not, it's going to happen. I got home the other day. My neighbor walked up to me and said, I need Jesus. Yeah, this is what's happening. There's a move of God. There is a move of God. And I said this in the first service. I, 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 this to me is what it looks like when Jesus says that he's ironing out the wrinkles. He's ironing out the wrinkles. See, the supernatural en encounters are happening. They're happening because we say yes. We say yes, God, use us, send us, Father, wherever we're at. And so supernatural occurrences begin to happen. God is sending us forth. He's sending his church forth. Go forth. Do the work. It's really awesome. It's fun. It's empowering. He's with you. Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is for everyone. Blessings are for everyone. God's love is for everyone. Miracles are for everyone. Purity and righteousness is for everyone. And for anyone who's willing to receive. But how do they know? How do we experience? How does it come to be in the first place? And this is where we begin to get the reminder of Acts. They were in the room and they prayed and they received the blessing. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit came. But I love this because they didn't keep it to themselves. Holy Spirit doesn't come to us and say, 
I used to have a really hard time with this. I used to think that it was just for church. I used to think that it was just for our experience in the church. But never once did the Holy Spirit ever come to me, Rita Ann, and say, this is just between you and me. We're going to keep this our little secret. This is our little secret, just you and me, church. No, not at all. And aren't you glad? Jesus wants this for everyone. Again, salvation is for everyone. The blessings are for everyone. The Holy Spirit, the move of God, it's for everyone. It's absolutely for everyone. God is establishing a new normal in us today. So that by the time we get to that first John 4, 4 part of our life where it says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, you will know because you will have seen and activated. You will have seen, you will have tasted, you will have moved. It's awesome. I received your move, God. I received the new normal in Jesus' name. And I just really believe this in my heart. We have come to a place. We have come to a place as a church supernaturally where either you're going to go to them or they're going to come to you. But it is going to happen. And it is already happening on a very large scale. Whether we realize it or not every day, I know that we're not always together to tell the testimonies, but it is happening. Get ready because wherever you go, and I'm decreeing it over your life right now, in Jesus' name, that wherever we go as a church in our everyday occurrences, no matter if I'm paying the light bill or I'm getting a haircut or I'm with Matthew at Wingstop, doesn't matter. That God is going to move supernaturally and that the Spirit of God is just moving over the people. Let's get into some word. The new normal. Life with the Holy Spirit in everything we do. Acts chapter 2. I'm going off the Passion Translation. Here's a moment where Peter has come out of the upper room and everybody thinks, that we're just paraphrasing here to, to share the story. Everybody thinks there's a bunch of crazy people, right? It's 9 o'clock in the morning and they're all drunk. Remember that story? And then Peter, supernaturally, by the work of God, he begins to preach. And he begins this, and he says this, okay, inside of his preach. He says this in Acts chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit on everybody. It's the reminder of what God is doing. And what's happening in this moment in Acts chapter 2, okay? And go back and study it later. But what happens is that he, Peter, with authority, okay, because he has the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is telling everybody, they're not drunk. This is what's happening. And he begins to repeat to them a prophecy from the prophet back in the day and says, this is that. So it's not, you know, God is still trying to pour out his spirit. Peter is acknowledging and saying what was spoken of in that day has come in this day. This is a now word. You have the Holy Spirit. This is what you're looking at. God has poured out his Holy Spirit and you may not understand it, but this is what's happening. And he begins to tell them about Jesus. And he goes from there to a really super awesome preach. And in that moment, 3,000 are added to their numbers. I mean, that... It, can I just tell you, there was, it wasn't just a few days ago before this that Peter forgot who he was. He forgot who he was. He forgot of all the times that he was walking with Jesus and saw miracles. He forgot when he got out of the, out of the boat and walked on water. He forgot some stuff. But the Holy Spirit came in and gave him a new normal. This is your life now, son. This is your life now, daughter. And now he begins to move supernaturally, and it's for everyone. Thank you, God. This is what God wants to do with us. Now, I know it sounds scary sometimes because we think that we're going to go into Starbucks, and if this happens, it's awesome. Let it happen. But we think that we're going to go into Starbucks or, or the next local coffee house or whatever, and then we're going to have to smack people with the power of God for there to be a display of the work. That could happen. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just, you heard it from me first. 
If it's time to do it, it's time to do it. I, you, you better be with the Lord. Don't just go around smacking people. But here's the deal. You have Jesus in you. And the Holy Spirit wants out. And whether it's one or 5,000, you just go for it. Just go for it. Allow the Holy Spirit to go. Again, remember, the Holy Spirit is not just for the church. I mean, we have awesome experiences with the Holy Spirit, but we're called to release. I mean, God gives us permission when he tells us, go and preach the gospel to everyone. Go and preach the gospel to everyone. And so, again, if you don't do it, they're going to come to you because you have a promise that lives inside of you. You are light in the darkness. You have Jesus Christ. You have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is who we are, Shiloh. I absolutely love that we already are activated in this and we are moving in this because we have some great teaching in the house. But the reminder still serves its purpose. It's for us today. It's for us now. And we will go and do it. Online family, this is for you too. Web church, this is for you too. Acts 1.8. It says like this. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Acts 1.8 in the Passion says this, but I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be filled with power and you will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places on earth. That word power in the Passion Translation, it's the, it's the Aramaic meaning for seize power. Meaning to take hold of. So his promise there then this word is take hold of it. Grab it. It's there for you. It's here for you now. You can take it with you wherever you go. Move. We talked about this uh, last night. Brother Timothy's here. Hey, Brother Timothy. How you doing? We just had some excellent meetings uh, or yesterday, uh, you were hosting uh, some awesome meetings. Come up here really quick and just say hi to the people. Uh, just 30 seconds, just come and say hi. This is Timothy. Give him a hand. He's uh, ministering to the First Nations people all over the place. And so just say hi really quick. I don't know if, how many people know you were here before, yes. uh, but yesterday we got to minister and, and, just, and just we had held meetings here and we had some First Peoples here. Yes. And it was awesome. So say hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, I'm done. Well, it's really great to be here and to be a part of what God's doing here at Shiloh Fellowship. I'm really thankful to be here. I'm just reminded of a scripture I just want to share. I'm not going to take more than 30 seconds, hopefully. Um, but Isaiah 65, 8 says, The blessing's in the cluster, and new wine is found in it. And we're just happy to be a part of the cluster here at Shiloh Fellowship. We understand the blessing's not in the grape, the single grape. I mean, it only has so much juice. The blessings in the cluster. And that's where the new wine, the blessings coming in this day and hour. So we're just happy to be a part of the cluster here in Shiloh. Amen. Thankful for Francisco. He was there with us all day serving and helping and speaking and praying for people as well. Really thankful to be here. We minister uh, to Native American people. Um, we always say all natives are going to go to heaven. That's because we all got reservations. <laughs> so um, we might adopt some of you so you can make it in. Francisco, he's going to make it, but we're really thankful to be a part of the cluster. And how many know that cluster is made up, made up of the red, yellow, black, and white? And that's the reason why God's going to do a mighty move in this day and hour through the cluster. And that's all of us together. So we're just thankful to be here with you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Come on. We receive that new wine, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Timothy took hold of the power. And he goes out to all the First Nations uh, reservations that he can, wherever they'll let him come. And he goes with the power of God, and he's, he's just doing an awesome work, but it's for us too. Life is changing as we know, know it. I'm going to give you a quick example, practical example of what this looks like. My son, Zion. Oh, my God. He's the baby of the family. Sweet boy. He comes to me, you know, like, when he gets hungry, he says, I'm hungry. And somehow, this means now that I'm supposed to be moved with compassion and cook for him. 
and I do because I'm his dad, but we started something different in the house called the new normal, right? We started called something called the new normal in our house, and that means that you are empowered to get up and make it yourself. Yeah. Now, there are times when mom's going to cook and we're going to share a, a, a meal together, but my son Zion is now getting a revelation of the new normal, right? He's, uh, he's eight years old. Yeah, he's eight years old. So he's receiving this revelation now, right? That, that he can go. That he can go downstairs to the pantry because he has been given everything that he needs to make himself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Or grab a cereal bar or whatever he needs. That he's empowered. So we're practicing this at home, the new normal. That doesn't mean he doesn't need mom and dad. No, we need our heavenly father. But that he has within him the ability, the strength that he can. He has the courage. And listen, he didn't do so good the first week. He cried it out. He wasn't sure. What do you mean? What do you mean? Go be myself. What do you mean? Go out. I don't know what there is. We'll go to the pantry, son. We open the pantry. A whole new world. You know, there's food everywhere. It was amazing. Thank you, God, for your provision and your abundance. And there it is. And now he doesn't ask. He doesn't ask anymore if it's the right time to eat. He doesn't, well, it could be a problem later. I don't know. We'll see. But right now we're teaching him about the new normal and abundance. So later on we'll, we'll have a different discussion. But right now my son is getting it. When I'm hungry, I can go down and do it. He's been empowered. And the Holy Spirit has come to empower us. Yes, you can preach the gospel. Yes, you can pray for the sick. Yes, they will be healed is the promise from God. Yeah. When you do something, right? When you take action, it will come. The healing is there. Thank you, Jesus. So we're getting a new normal. Why? I'll start it like this, like we, like we talked about last week. Because God cares. In John chapter 15, verse 2, it starts like this in the Passion Translation. He cares. The Father cares. He cares so much that he gave us his one and only son. He cares so much that he made sure that we would no longer have a part of death, but that we would be supernatural, that we would have life. He cares so much. He loves us with an everlasting love. He absolutely 100% cares. He absolutely cares about your needs and the things that are important to you. He absolutely cares, but not just you, for everyone around you. And what we're doing this week is last week we received it for ourselves, but this week we're receiving it for everyone around us. We're receiving it for our families. We're receiving it for our households. We're receiving it for the family name. We're receiving it for everybody. I'm really excited. Starbucks just hired a whole new crew of baristas. Really excited. They're all going to come to know Jesus. They're all going to come to know Jesus. Why? Because we're praying for them. Because when we go in there, we choose to release the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Why does it work? Because they're not trophies, they're treasures. I used to look at people as trophies. I used to look as witnessing as a task. But something changed. The heart of God got a hold of me. And I began to see people for who they were, the treasures of God. The lovely treasures of God. And this will allow you to preach the gospel to anyone that would hear it. Any person that will hear it. Any person that wants it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's ask him for his heart. Father, for your treasures, Lord. Let us, seek, let us see people the way you see them, God. With life, God. Let us see people the way you see them, God. You are so in love with the world, God. You are so in love with the people of the world, God. You are so in love, God, that you gave your one and only son, Father. Help us to see people the way you see them. It is not our job to go out and tell people how horrible they are. Listen, people already know they're hurting. People know something's not right. It's our job just to come in with love. Be kind. Do something nice. It's biblical. God sees what he created. He sees through the lens of the blood of Jesus. 
We see this in the word. Peter and the disciples, you know, having, having now the Jesus and this whole experience of the Holy Spirit and living a new normal life, they can go out now and they can go and, and they step forward and they start to, they start to, to preach and to, and to manifest Jesus. Right after Peter preaches, he goes in, in chapter three, Acts chapter three, I'm gonna read it to you. One afternoon, Peter and John went to the temple for three o'clock prayer. So they were just doing normal life. We're going to pray. As they came up to the entrance of the beautiful gate, they were captured by the sight of a crippled man from birth being crippled at a place at the, and placed at the entrance to the temple. So this was this guy's normal. His normal was that he was hurt. He didn't have Jesus in his life. He didn't have healing in his life. He, his normal was all crippled up. That's hard. And here come along two guys celebrating the new normal, just doing life. And there's a moment where they, they meet eyes. When he noticed Peter and John going to the temple, he begged them for money. He saw something on them. He begged them for money. Peter and John looking straight into his eyes of the crippled man said, look at us. Now, I know that typically in the context, it's like, look at us, dude, we ain't got no money. But I believe what he was saying is, hey, look, I got something for you. No, I, 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 don't, I don't have a bunch of money right now. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't have any spare change for the homeless guy? You ever been in a situation where you yourself were needing the miracle, <laughs> the financial miracle, and you didn't have to share? Well, this is Peter and John's reality at this moment. But he looks at him and he says, hey, but what I do have, I would gladly share with you. But what I do have, I would love to give to you. But what I do have, but what I do have, oh man, let me tell you what I have. I would love to share this with you. This is better than money. This is better than money. I always have a hard time with this because I can't see when I cry. Peter said, I don't have money, but I'll give you this. By the power of the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Oh my God. They were just going to prayer. They were just doing everyday life. And all of a sudden, there was an encounter for them. Listen, you either go to them or they're going to come to you. In this moment, the beggar comes to them. The crippled man is at their doorstep, so to speak. He has come to them. And he says, I need help. And they did not turn him away. I don't have money, but what I have, I will give to you. And what happens? The man gets up and walks. In another translation, he says he hugs Peter and John and goes to church with them. Goes to prayer with them. Now listen, no one recognized him. Supernaturally, the principle is this, that as you begin to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, as you begin to allow your new normal to take over, as you allow to, the Holy Spirit to move on people's lives, they will be unrecognizable because death is no longer a part of their life. Curse is no longer part of their life. And they're walking in healing now. They're walking as new creatures before God, before the world, and the world will not recognize them. That's why when we come to Jesus, people will often look at us and say, what's different about you? I'm walking with life. That's what's different about me. That's what has changed. This is my new normal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is my new normal. Be kind. The Bible tells us that kindness leads us to repentance. Peter and John, in that moment, chose to be kind. They chose to be Christian. They chose to be givers in that moment. And that man's life was changed forever. My neighbor, his life was changed forever. Every encounter, every person that you meet on the street, their life is about to change forever. This is the new normal. 
This is what we're stepping into as a body of Christ. That the gospel of Jesus Christ would be made known to every tribe, every tongue, every nation, everyone at any time, all the time. I can't say it enough. This is what's happening. There's a transformation occurring. The devil thought he won. Ha ha. Joke's on you. The joke's on you. I love that picture. We talked about it during worship. That minister, he grabs two chairs. He puts one in front of the other. He sits in one. He tells the devil, sit in the other. You're going to watch me worship Jesus. This is the new normal. This is the new normal that we would engage with, a, with our relationship in Jesus Christ so much that everything else would just fall, fail, or not even come close to the glory that we know. Thank you, Jesus. Here's the last one. Number three, we are called to be a blessing. This is the new normal. Get ready. Get ready. We are called to be a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere you go, you get to be a blessing. Remember, his kindness leads us to repentance. That's in Romans. His kindness leads us to is the reminder that because God cares and loves us so much and was so good to us that we get to be good to others. Jesus himself said it. I did not come to condemn the world. I did not come to tell you how evil you are. I did not come to tell you, hold up a picket sign and tell you why you're going to hell. But rather, I came so that you would have life and have it abundantly. Church, we are those in this hour that get to be a blessing. And that's what I love about our church. We know this. This is part of us. It's why everywhere we go, we want to help people. It's why every time there's somebody with a need at church, we arise to the occasion. Every time that there's a need on the street, we arise to the occasion. Why? Because we know that we identify with this and we are called to be a blessing. We are called to be a blessing. Say it now. I am a blessing. Amen. Blessed to be blessed. Patricia just wrote a book on it. Blessed to be a blessing everywhere you go, that you would be a blessing. Yes! Man, that removes so much pressure. That removes so much pressure. We don't have to fix anybody. Jesus does it. We just get to lead them to the cross. You know, Peter and John, when they met the cripple guy, they just prayed for him. Get up and walk. Get up and walk. They released the Holy Spirit. They released the new normal over him, the supernatural working power of God, and the guy got up, and then he went to church with him. Now, whatever the order is, there's two things that are important. One is that they experience God, and two, that they have him. And you can, depending on the situation, change the order. It's okay. We can do this, church. We can do this. God is calling us, even now in this hour, Shiloh, God is calling us to be a church that does outreach. It's why we're looking at Cambodia. It's why we're looking at northern Iraq. It's why we're going into the to unreached places. It's why we're doing it. Because we know and we have the word of the Lord that we have a new life, that we are transformed, that we have the Holy Spirit, that we are called to be a light in the darkness and that we're gonna go. I can't wait for the day that we have a church on the native reservation. I can't wait for the day that we have a church in North Korea. One's not in the works yet, but come on. Shiloh, Korea. We'll call it in. Why not? Why not? Come on. We already have a satellite church at Starbucks every week. We're taking over. The glory of God be made manifest for everyone to see, feel, touch, grab, taste. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. It says this about Jesus. We're talking about being kind. We're talking about being a blessing. It says this in Acts 38. I picked a lot of verses in Acts because it's the doer book. <laughs> Do you know Jesus of Nazareth? how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. God is with you. 
Why are you called to be a blessing? Because God is with you. You have God. You can go out. How do you do it? Man, sometimes you're going to do acts of kindness. Sometimes you're just going to pray for people. But whatever it is, in every situation, you have the answer because you have God. God is with you. Jesus was never short of answers. Thank you, God. Because everywhere he went, he had God with him. We have God with us. We, Shilonites, are not short of answers. We go to God and God does the, the work. He does the display. He uses us to do it. Amen. The Bible says this in Proverbs 11, verse 25. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched. Wow. You'll be blessed for being a blessing. I, I received that promise. That's in the word of God. That's in Proverbs. A really wise guy said that. 2 Corinthians 9.8. Besides, God is able to make every blessing of yours overflow for you. So that in every situation, you will always have all you need for any good work. Yes! We're not short of answers. Yes, God. Lord, you have what people need. In the moment, the very moment that they need it. Yes, God. Yes, God, one of the biggest mistakes I made as a pastor coming in is thinking that I had to have the answer for everyone. Oh, man, thank you, God. You schooled me good. First day on the job, I had to go pray for some triplets who were dying in the hospital. I don't have an answer for that, but I know the one that does. And we started praying and we started seeing God move and God supernaturally started moving over their lives. One did go to be in heaven with the Lord. The other two are here today. Walking, playing, having fun, growing up. Good boys, little babies. And every time they have a birthday, I get invited and I go. And I go. And I go. Because every time I look at them, I remember God has a yes. God has the answer. God is blessing us. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says this, and the person who sows sparingly reaps sparingly. And the person who sows generously reaps generously. And we preach that a lot in the context of money, but you know what? Sowing, being a blessing, stepping out and doing good things for others, that is called sowing. That is called sowing. Being generous with your time, that's being, that's being a good steward. I mean, that's called sowing right there. We will reap in the name of Jesus. Come on. We're sowing miracles. We get miracles. Come on. I love that picture. Hebrews 13, 16. You having fun? Hebrews 13, 16. And do not forget to do good and share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. It makes God really happy that you go out of your way to bless someone. It makes him really happy. God is smiling on you. Yes. Thank you, God. This is the new normal. I have an understanding that I'm going out to bless my father today. That when I bless people, I'm blessing him. Yes. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Jesus Christ so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Remember that Jeremiah 29.11? For I have plans for you, says the Lord. And we're, I'm a masterpiece. Say, I'm a masterpiece. Yeah, get excited. You look good. Man, you are awesome. You are so beautiful. You are God's handiwork. When God looks at you, he says, man, I did good. Woo! Come on, Matthew, you're looking good today, brother. Come on, Glenn. I see you. Looking good today. Sam? Yeah, Sam knows. He's got the revelation. Ron, you're looking good today. Come on, man. I'm God's masterpiece. I'm his handiwork. Get excited. You got purpose in your life. Come on, you look good today. Say, I look good today. Yeah, look in the mirror. I look good today. Some ladies pulling out their little makeup mirrors. Trying to confirm. I love that not only did he plan you before the foundations of the, of the earth, but all of the good things that you're going to do. Man, that's so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. This is the new normal. 
us understanding that we were are his men, his masterpiece, and that we get to do good things. This is the new normal. In Jesus' name, we are a supernatural people. Proverbs 16, 24 says this. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Yes. We get to speak kind words. We get to speak words of life over everyone. The reason I said some of those, the reason I shared some of those, because as we go today, as we go today, we can start by releasing the glory of God over others, by saying kind things and doing kind things and letting them know that it's Jesus who loves them, that it's Jesus who paid the price, that it's Jesus who loves them so much that he is causing this kind act to happen. He's causing this supernatural moment to happen. He's causing the answer of this prayer right now in Jesus' name. Today, earlier when you walked in, we gave you some Shiloh swag. We gave you a bracelet. If you didn't get one, you can get one from the ushers after service. Take as many as you like, as many as there is. It's a little Shiloh bracelet on there that says, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I only wear that today as a reminder. Well, I haven't taken it off since I got it. It's been a couple of weeks, but it's that constant reminder that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I'm his masterpiece. I get to to go and do my father's bidding because we have the Holy Spirit. I mean, we get to go and move forward. Come on, this is my new normal. I live for Jesus, and I don't want it any other way. And no matter what you do for a living, I got friends who are handymen. I got friends who are contractors. I got friends who are doctors. I got friends who are lawyers. I got professional friends, uh, professional athlete friends. In everything that you do, in everything that you do, you can glorify Jesus. Athletes need Jesus too. Construction workers need Jesus too. Come on. Everybody needs Jesus. Where you're at in life, where you're at in life, your lot in life, where you're at, there's people around you that need Jesus. In this hour, right here, right now, in this moment, we're going to receive the blessing of the new normal, and we're going to go out. We're going to go out. Remember that as you go, that you already have Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You can begin to release blessing on others. Prayer is powerful. Oh, prayer is powerful. A couple of weeks ago, I walked into my favorite satellite office, and one of the girls, she was hobbling in, Oh, what's wrong? There's some kindness. What's wrong? What's going on? Are you okay? I broke my toe. Let me pray for you. The next day, she came in, high-fived me. I thought your toe was broken. Not anymore. Whoa. Whoa. I said, come back. She's like, I'm late for work. I'll follow you. What happened? She goes, I don't know. I just know that I woke up this morning and got healed. And I know it's because you prayed. We started thanking God right there. In that moment, we started thanking God together. She knows that God is real. She went to bed with a broken toe, woke up with a healing. Praise Jesus. Amen. All because we stepped out, church. We stepped out. So as you go, know that you are ready. The world is ready, but so are you. That's one of the things I use in the introduction of the message. The world is ready for Jesus. And You have him, so you are ready. Step out. God will show you. He'll show you what to do. Absolutely, he'll show you. And prophesy. Come on. Prophesy. The spirit of Jesus Christ is prophecy. I mean, just prophesy. Speak life over people. Sometimes people say, well, I don't don't get these huge prophetic words. Maybe not, but we can all prophesy by speaking kind words and life over people because it leads people to life. And the spirit of prophecy is that it would lead people to life. Remember, it says that prophecy is the exhortation, the edification of the saints. That means it's good stuff. We can all say something really good about someone else and lead them to life. We can all do it. We can all do it. Why? Because we picked up the new normal today that says that we're going to begin to see people the way Jesus sees them. That's who we are. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let's, uh, let's stand to our feet. Let's receive this new normal. Let's receive this new normal for us today. In the name of Jesus, just begin to receive it right now. Just pull it down for your life. Father, I receive the new normal, Father. I thank you, God, that this is, the, this is a standard of life, Father, that we would live by the supernatural work of your Holy Spirit, God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Father, we receive your work right now. We receive your word right now in Jesus' name, Father. Lord, I thank you, God, that all around the church, Father, we're already thinking about situations and areas where we can be a blessing. Father, I know that here at Shiloh, we're so excited about this, and so we're already stepping out and seeing areas in our life where we know that we can be a blessing, and this is a good thing, Father, and I pray for more encounters right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for more supernatural divine encounters, Father. I thank you, Lord, that we are rising to the occasion in this hour, Father, and that we are receiving, in, in receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Father, that you are moving through us supernaturally, God, and Father, even though we might not always feel like we have the answers, Father, that you do, and that we are plugged into you, Father. Father, we have you, Jesus, and that you go with us everywhere that we go. Father, and I thank you that there's two results in this new in this uh, new normal life, and that's one, either we will go to the people, or two, they will come to us. But whatever the case may be, Father, we thank you right now in this moment that we have the answer because we have you in Jesus' name. I'm going to bless you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree over you that you are a powerful people, that you are a supernatural people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I prophesy over you right now that you will work in signs and wonders and miracles and that this is a season where you will see the manifest glory of God in everything that you do and everywhere you go because this is the season that God has ordained that his glory his love his kindness would be made manifest to the world because the world is dying the world is sick the world is hurting but in the name of Jesus he has created you for such a time as this that you will be released and launched out into the world and that you are just not a nobody but you are God's masterpiece you are are God's answer in this hour and that he is using you powerfully in Jesus name and whether that means you're going to see the the people get slain in the spirit or that means that you're going to see the Holy Spirit uh, uh, you know descend like a dove you're going to see the power of Jesus in you I decree that over you now in Jesus name get ready church because there's an explosion of evangelism there's an explosion of outreach and either you're going to go to the people or they're going to come to you but the result is the same that there's a light that's in you that's greater than the darkness around around you. And in the name of Jesus, you will, you will, you will take the gospel of Jesus Christ to those around you and the blessing for the people in Jesus name. Amen. Yes, man. That's some good prayer. I've had a lot of practice. Thank you, God. Well, really quick here. What we want to do is uh, go ahead and take your seats. Something else that we get to do is, is so be a generous people. That's who we are. This is our normal, this is our new normal life, that we are a people of extreme generosity. And this morning, I would have you ask the Holy Spirit. I know a lot of you have come already with your tithes and offerings prepared, but I would even ask you to ask the Holy Spirit how he would have you sow today. How he would have you sow today. I want to share a personal testimony of one of my transformations of new normal, of the new normal life that I have in Jesus Christ and the supernatural working power of God. I remember there was a season where I was completely uh, devastated in the sense of financially because of so many layoffs. It's hard. It's hard. I had received layoff after layoff. It was in that 2008, 2012, you know, those years. And I'd received layoff after layoff after layoff. It was hard. Oh, man, it was hard. I mean, it, 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 sometimes it was to the point where I was embarrassed to look at my wife because I just felt, oh, man, I had felt so bad. I felt so bad, like I couldn't provide for my family. That hurt. And God has healed me. I only, I only get a little teary-eyed because I remember God's goodness, not because I remember the pain. But I remember I was in that moment. I had just a little bit of money, and I, I, was, I was just asking God, Lord, I, I, I need this to stretch. Like, I don't know when I'm going to get paid again. And this little bit of money, I don't know what else to do with this. And I believe right there in that moment, God dealt with me. Because I was, I, I was thinking I could do this, I could do that, I could do the other. But I believe that God released a word over me that healed me. And he said, don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed, son. He quickly reminded me of that story. Where there's the two women, there's a big famine in the land. There's herd everywhere. And there's the two women who say, hey, listen, today we'll eat my child, tomorrow we'll eat yours. Children are a prophetic promise of God. They're the seed of the future. And the principle is this. Don't eat your seed. Give to the Lord what's the Lord's. He will make do. You know what happened to me in that moment? What happened to me in that moment is that I chose with my heart to give to the Lord what was his. 
And when I did, I can't, I, I'm not kidding you when I say that somebody showed up to my door with like $1,000 worth of brand new groceries because my number one concern was that I would be able to feed my family. I was embarrassed. I'm, you, know, it, like, you know, that was an embarrassing moment in my life. It wasn't because I didn't have the ability to work. There was no work. There was no work. It was hard. But Jesus met me where I was, and he helped me. And I sowed my seed, and I've never had to look back. The blessing and the provision of the Lord has been on my life every day since in rich ways. And God always has provided, and my family has never gone hungry. In Jesus' name. And I just feel that there's somebody who needs to hear that, that you're like, you're in a moment where you're just thinking to yourself, Lord, I don't know what to do next. But God is saying right now that he's going to bring healing and provision to you. Healing and provision to you in this hour, that as you sow, there's healing and provision for you. And if you're saying to yourself, well, I'm not in that, in that place, it's okay. So for that place. So, so not for that place in the sense of I'm going to receive that. Please, I worded that wrong. Don't take it like that. What I mean is, so remembering all the goodness that's on your life. So knowing that your Lord, your God, and your provider has blessed you so much, right? That you're going to praise him today. Now, this is a free will offering, but we're going to do it together. We're going to receive this offering together as a people of God. Thank you, Jesus. To all the glory be you, Father. There's different ways you can sow here at Shiloh. If you're watching online, uh, you can totally, there's a, I believe there's a donate button there on the social media pages. You can also go to shilohfellowship.com. There's a donate button there. You could also go uh, and dial, seven, uh, text the word seed to 73256. Uh, you can also go to our Realm app, download the Realm app. That, that is awesome. I don't know how you mean on the Realm app, but man, this is a blessing. This is a really great app. It keeps you up to date with everything going on in church. You can even set up your reoccurring giving. Uh, me and Desi did this recently, and we love it because the first expense, it, this is just testimony for us, the first expense that posts on our records is our tithe, and we just absolutely love that. That's, that's just my testimony. Absolutely love it. It just blesses my heart. Blesses my heart. And we're going to give today a worship, a sacrifice of worship to the Lord. God is pleased with us. Yes, God. Thank you, God. God is pleased with us. And we're going to worship him as such. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to worship him like we know that, he ple that he's pleased with us. In the name of Jesus, hold your seat. In the name of Jesus, Father, we decree over the seat that it's a blessing, Father, and that we'll have future impact, a positive future impact, hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you from this day forward that you're settling the issue in our hearts, but you're also teaching us how to live by a new normal standard, that we would be a generous people, Father, and that we would give, that we would give, uh, Father, knowing that it is you who is the provider at all costs and in, in every turn, Father. Father, I pray for those that have a heart to give but can't sow today, Father, I pray that you would give them seed to sow like you did to me, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, I also decree over this seed that's being sown. The de debts are being canceled now in Jesus' name. I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that your investments will grow in Jesus' name, that God will guide you in Jesus' name. Right now, I pray, uh, I just feel like there's those who, have been, who are seeking to buy a house. In the name of Jesus, we just, we just decree that you will have one in Jesus' name, that God's going to lead you to the right door. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you. The debt is being canceled, Father. You are going to remove debt supernaturally as we sow today, Father, as we take heed of this word, Lord, as we give you what's yours first, God. We, we take hold of the promise, Father, that you are blessing us and that this is our new normal, Father. This is our supernatural life in Jesus' name. We pray, amen, <laughs> amen. There's, a, there's always a lot of stories to share uh, of God, the way he's moving and everything. You know, one time I was in a coffee house and uh, I know the guys hate when I share this story, but they were with me. And, uh, uh, and I don't mean hate as in that they don't want me to ever share, but just it, I know how they feel about it sometimes. But we were in a coffee house and it was really busy one time. And, you know, I just started singing. It just came on me. It was an upper room moment. It just came on me, and I just started singing, Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 
And I look at my friend Ben and I'm like, sing it with me, Ben. And he takes off his headphones and he got into it. Oh. And we just start singing. And before you know, I mean, this, this coffee house was jam packed with people. So there's no way that you're going to have a personal conversation. And I just start singing to Jesus. And don't you know that the, that the room transformed? You could feel the tangible presence of God in the place. And my other buddy started singing with us too, even though he wanted to slouch in his seat. I'm just being real. And we just did it like that, man. And the presence of God came in. So as you go this week, know that you carry the presence of God with you, that you're an atmosphere changer. Go and change the atmosphere everywhere you go in Jesus' name. All right, well, that's what we have today. God bless you. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, for that word. <clears throat> Lots of stories to share. Happy stories are coming in abundance. All kinds of stuff are coming. Remember the book, Light Belongs in the Darkness? If you uh, want to know, even about prophetic evangelism, it's all in here. <laughs> this is funny. I forgot about this chapter. Starting a goodness revolution. Yeah, come on, going out and being good. That's awesome. Well, Pastor Jamie, are you here? No, Pastor Jamie's not here. He left. Okay. They're probably getting ready for the seniors' lunch. Yeah, 55 or better. Well, how about this? Let's take a look at the video announcements for this week as, uh, as we get ready to, uh, uh, to end the service. All right? All right, roll that footage. Hello and welcome, Shiloh. We're so happy you've joined us today. Here's a look at what's coming at you this week. Seniors, today is your day. After our 1030 service, we are having the seniors luncheon here at the studio in the NPR. Come on out. We're going to have a wonderful taco salad bar and we're going to host and honor our seniors. Are you 55 or better? Come on out. We want to see you there. Have you heard about our midweek services yet? If not, Shiloh and Espanol is here at the studio every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our local Spanish congregation. We'd love to see you there. Women of Shiloh, this Tuesday, the 30th at 6.30 p.m. Women, come on out. Let's gather together for food, for fellowship, for fun, and time being encouraged in the Word. Our location has changed here from the studio to over there at the PKM house. So if you need directions or you need an address or any further details, please contact me after service. Look forward to seeing you there. Here at Shiloh, we have healing teams. We have Restoring the Foundations and the Healing Rooms. They are both by appointment only. So if you would like to get connected, email us at info at shilohfellowship.com and get connected with the healing that God has for you. Realm Connect app. Shiloh, this is the way to go. You can stay connected with the community. You can give. You can be in the know for everything. If you haven't downloaded it, I strongly encourage you to do it today. Experience Night is here, May 5th. Come on out to Maricopa at the studio at 6 p.m. We are going to have Experience Night hosted by Patricia King and Robert Hodgkin with special guests Katie Souza and Charlie Robinson and a special guest worship leader, Mark Schneider. Come on out. We can't wait to see you. Shiloh, that's a wrap for all of this week's video announcements. Be blessed and go forth in the Lord's favor and all of His blessings for you this week. Amen. That's awesome. So that's what's happening. Grab a bulletin. Grab a calendar. Uh, you definitely want to be a part of everything going on. Lots of fun stuff coming up. Lots of good stuff coming up. Shiloh, we are a family. We are a community. And we will act like it. <laughs> we're going to act like it. And we're going to do that by being together. Amen. And so look for opportunities. There's, there's opportunities for you to hang out with people. Hey, be intentional and go out and, and make some friends. This is really awesome what God is doing in the house. And so, of course, remember today... 55 or better? Come on, we have a luncheon for you, and, uh, and we're going to make everyone else drool. So if you're not 55 or better, we love you, but this one is uh, special. We're going we're gonna to honor the generations today, and so we're going to have a great time. Also, tonight we do have church at 6 p.m., and uh, we're going to deal with some heart issues. We're going to deal with some heart issues tonight. I believe that God wants to touch some hearts tonight. You know, I'm reminded uh, this week as I was just praying about it, uh, I'm reminded of the story of, uh, of stories in the Bible like Paul and Silas where they were in a prison right? They were, in a, they were caught up in a place where all of a sudden, I mean, everything looked good. They were doing normal life, and all of a sudden, they got put in, pres in prison because of their belief in Jesus, because of what God was doing in their life. And I feel like sometimes we are caught up in a prison. 
We, are, we feel that we're caught up in a prison, but don't you know that God has the answer? And I just really feel like God is freeing some hearts tonight. There's some issues that need to be addressed. And so prophetically, we're just going to believe the Lord for that. And we're going to, we're going to, uh, we do have a plan. No, I have a plan. Uh, I believe that God gave me a strategy, but we're going to believe the Lord for the healing is what I'm trying to say. And so come tonight, we're at 6 p.m. We're going to have a great time together. We're even going to have an, a really fun acoustic set for worship. It's going to be awesome. And so we're just going to have a great time. Online family, you can join us on shadowfellowship.com uh, for that service. But just know this, that as you go, an altar team, come on up. Brrr. Hey, give them a hand. They're so awesome. <laughs> altar team, altar team. Listen, they want to pray with you. They want to spend time with you. They want to get to know you. Uh, but they also want to call the blessing of God over your life. Uh, and so come and be uh, and come and receive uh, what, uh, what the Lord has for you today. Um, if you need prayer, please let it just know that we are here to pray for you. Hey, as you go, remember this. God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. Amen. I believe you're here not by chance but by divine appointment. I believe the Lord is drawing you into Him and He is making you aware of Him and His presence and His love for you. He loves you so much. He loves you with an everlasting love, so much so that He gave His life for you, so that you would never be separated from Him. He loves you so much. He, he knows everything about you, the number of hairs on your head, your dreams, your desires, what you want in life, and it all matters to Him. He loves you. And so if you feel that tugging at your heart and you want to make Him the Lord of your life, repeat after me. Jesus, I pray that you would just come in and that you would forgive me of my sins and that you would wash over me with your love and make me new in you. If you said that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God and congratulations. He has such amazing, beautiful plans for you. If this was the first time that you have said that prayer or even the second time and you just felt that pull to rededicate your life, please email us at info at shilohfellowship.com. We have a free gift for you, a book called The Good Life, and we want to bless you with that. Thank you again for joining us. And remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does.